Hello, everyone. My name is Jason Lichtman, and welcome to today's webinar. Today's topic is going to be five reasons every machinist should program their parts in Fusion 360. Whether you're currently programming at the controller or using another CAM software, we're going to talk about all the reasons that you should at least try out Fusion 360 for yourself. After all, your friends are probably bragging about how they're using Fusion 360, and you're wondering what it's all about. So we're going to be covering quite a few different topics today. Let's start with our actual agenda. I'm going to tell you a little bit about me because I'm going to be talking quite a bit. And so I think it would only be appropriate for us to get to know each other just a little bit. I'm going to tell you about Autodesk and its mission to be able to provide software to help people like you be able to make incredible things. And we're going to talk about the five reasons every machinist should program their parts in Fusion 360. You haven't seen what those reasons are, so I'll give you a little sneak peek. Fusion 360 is fast. Fusion 360 is integrated. We'll talk a little bit more about what that means and why that's beneficial to you. Fusion 360 is powerful. Fusion 360 is affordable. And last but not least, Fusion 360 is easy to learn. Now, each of these things on their own might not be a compelling reason for you to switch your CAM software, but when you bring all of these together, I think you're going to find that there are a lot of good reasons for you to give Fusion 360 a try. And we're going to show you what they are and also provide more detail and give you examples as well. We're also going to talk about how you can get access to a risk-free trial, so you could actually try this out for yourselves free of charge, of course. And then last but not least, we're also going to show you how you could get in touch with our sales team for a technical evaluation, try to find out if is Fusion 360 the right fit for your business in particular. And then lastly, a Fusion 360 demonstration to actually prove out your workflows for you. Those are customized presentations and meetings directly with the Autodesk team intended to try to help you get all the information you need for you to be able to make the best decision. So that's our agenda for today. If there's anything that I'm missing that you would like to see today, please feel free to ask a question in the Q&A section or in the chat window, and I will make sure to monitor, monitor that section as we go through our presentation today. So let's start with about today's presenter. So that's me, of course. I look like this guy in the picture on the right, except less hair these days. I need a new picture, I guess. But my name is Jason Lichtman, and I'm a senior technical specialist for design and manufacturing here at Autodesk. I focus specifically on Fusion 360. I'm a mechanical engineer by background, which I hope you don't hold too much against me, because at the end of the day, you know, I've spent 15 plus years in product design and development taking ideas and turning them into 3D models, turning those 3D models into prototypes, and then those prototypes into mass production. It's all about taking those ideas and turning it into physical objects. And that's what I specialize in. So we're gonna show you today some workflows based on my experience, because I've used a lot of different softwares that are out there, but my absolute favorite is Fusion 360. And don't get me wrong, I know I'm biased, I work at Autodesk, but I work at Autodesk on purpose because I think Fusion 360 is the future of CAD and CAM. Well, let's talk a little bit about Autodesk itself for a second. Let me fix my screen share so you can actually see this video a little bit more clearly. I'm gonna show you what Autodesk is all about. Autodesk is about empowering people like you, businesses like yours, to be able to design and make better products. You put that all together and it's all about being able to design and make a better world. And I know that that sounds cheesy, but at the end of the day, that's Autodesk's mission. Autodesk has actually three different sectors of the business. There's the media and entertainment section, which makes animation software and rendering software. So if you've ever seen the movie like Toy Story, for example, the type of software that you would use to create a movie like that is made by Autodesk. Also, we have another sector that's called AEC or architecture, engineering, and construction. And that's all about designing buildings and large scale construction projects. You might've heard of software like AutoCAD, that's Autodesk, AutoCAD. And in terms of design and manufacturing, we have a whole suite of different softwares available. Everything from helping you design on the CAD side, analyzing on the CAE side, and then also manufacturing on the CAM side of things. We have individual products that specialize in certain areas like electronics you see here on the screen, 
generative design, we have inspection tools or metrology tools, and a whole lot more. Really, we're trying to take all of the different ways that you might have to design and all of the different industries that you might design and manufacture in, and we're trying to make those workflows better and better and better. And that's where Fusion 360 comes in. Fusion 360 is the next generation CAD, CAE, and CAM platform, all created by Autodesk with the intent of, again, trying to be able to empower you to be able to make better products. So let's, now that you've seen a little taste about Autodesk itself, let's talk about those five reasons every machinist should program their parts in Fusion 360. After all, that's what you came here for today. Let me just switch my screen sharing settings one more time. Hold, please. There we go. All right. So reason number one, that's going to be fast. Fusion 360 is going to help you be able to program your parts faster. And it's partially because our user interface is intuitive. It's easy to learn. But it's also trying to streamline your design and making process. So let's jump into Fusion 360. I'm gonna show you an example of what I'm talking about. This particular one, we're gonna start off with a curb vise and I'm gonna end up machining a part. Let's go and grab that from our data panel. We're gonna go and machine this clutch cover. All I have to do is drag it into my model and there it is on the screen. I can leave it where it is, but for this particular example, let's go and place this where I want it to be. We have, remember, design tools as well that help you design not just the parts, but even like the way that you're gonna machine it in the machine itself. So I'm just grabbing the part itself. I'm gonna go and put this at my G54 location and that's looking pretty good. But my vice of course, isn't exactly set up for this part perfectly. Well, we have some tools to be able to make you do this really fast. In this particular case, I'm using what we call the parameter table to be able to quickly adjust my vice until I'm happy with how it's grabbing onto my part. I can also change the amount that it's gonna grip onto my part, maybe quarter of an inch, or maybe even an eighth of an inch. And that's looking pretty good. Now I'll note that this particular part is actually gonna be the second operation. This has already been machined on the other side of the part. We're gonna machine the second side. And as a result, we're gonna actually need to grab onto this with our soft jaws. And I wish I could have all of you show your hands. How many people in the room need to make soft jaws on a regular basis? Everyone realistically. So I'll show you how quick and easy it is to create the soft jaws, the tool path for the soft jaws, and then the tool path for the part itself. And again, it starts off in the design area. All I have to do is combine the part and my soft jaw. I'll do that again for the second jaw as well. If I hide my part, you're going to see that I have these indents in my soft jaws, but I really want that to be a cutaway. All I have to do is select the faces, and I'm gonna hit the delete key on my keyboard. Let me go and reselect there. Oh, hold on a second. There we are. I was hitting the wrong key on my keyboard. That's my fault. And we're gonna go and hit the delete key on my keyboard. So just like that, I now have my cutaway on that jaw. Let's go and do the same thing on the other side. Perfect, and again, hit the delete key. And this is looking pretty good. I will note, this is not symmetrical. These are different on each side. And that could be a lot of time for programming, but we're gonna make this really quick and really easy. And it's as simple as switching over from the design workspace, as we call it, to the manufacturer workspace. These workspaces are task dependent. So when you're designing something or setting something up for manufacturing, you'd be in the design area. And then when you're ready to actually go and manufacture it and create tool paths, you'd be in the manufacturer workspace. And you're gonna see here that I already have tool paths for each of the flow, for each of the jaws. This one actually is spelled wrong. Let's go and fix that right away. That'll drive us crazy, probably. We'll go and regenerate these tool paths for both of them. And then we could go and simulate what the tool paths are gonna be for each of these. Give that a second. Let's start with the left side. Oh, that was a little too fast. Let's slow it down and do that again. Perfect. Purple is showing you, by the way, what you still have to remove. Green is showing you what's already been removed or that you don't have to remove. So we have three operations here. Really quick, it looks like a total of five seconds worth of machining. 
really quick, really easy. But more importantly, I didn't have to do any of the programming. Everything was already set up. And then all I did was modify my soft jaws using my combined tool and the tool paths will update uh, accordingly or automatically. We'll go and check the, our other soft jaw, the fixed jaw this time. And same idea, about five seconds worth of machining. And now my soft jaw is looking really good. So again, trying to make things really fast for you. After all, time is money, especially in a business. So now let's go and program our part. So I have my part, let's go and show it on the screen. It'll make it a lot easier to program it, of course. So here's my part. We're gonna go and make sure our setup is what we want. So we're gonna actually go and machine the clutch cover itself. And then our stock is actually going to be from solid. That's going to be our stock from op number two that you could see on the screen in kind of a transparent yellow at the moment. And then we want to go and bring in tool paths. Now I could use a variety of different tool paths for this, our 2D tool paths, which are really 2D or two and a half D. We also have our 3D tool paths, which are typically simultaneous three axis tool paths. But one of the key differences between them is that the 2D tool paths are based on geometry that you select, like you select the edge or you select the hole, and it'll go in and follow that path. The 3D tool paths are a little bit more intelligent. They're going to go through your model itself and figure out what it needs to cut or what it can cut. So typically, I like to use the 3D toolpaths whenever possible. And I could go and put on here an adaptive clearing toolpath, which is a great roughing strategy to start us off. But if you want to really speed up your CAM workflow, then I would encourage you to use what we call CAM templates. And a CAM template is really just a group of toolpaths that you use on a regular basis. So as you can see here, I right clicked on my setup. I said create from template and I'm going to choose my three axis adaptive and horizontal and it's going to bring in those toolpaths with all the settings that I prefer to use. So it's going to grab the tool, it's going to grab my step down, it's going to grab my step over that I prefer, everything that I like to use. If I want to modify them, I could go and do that too. So I'll go and edit this toolpath. One of the things that I've set up here that I like to use is I want to make sure not to ever cut into the jaw itself. So under height, I could actually select as my bottom reference the jaw itself, and I could add maybe 50 thousandths of an inch above it to make sure that I'm not going to actually hit it. We'll go and do the same thing with our second tool path. Go to my height, choose the top of my jaw, and again, we're going to go and add 50 thousandths. It's going to automatically regenerate my tool paths. Now I could go and simulate what I have so far. Hit our play button. I'll zoom in so you could all see that a little bit more clearly. And I'll speed that up just a little bit. But this is a great roughing strategy. And you could see that it did most of the work for me without me having to do anything additional. But I do still have some sections on this part that still have the purple, right? And purple, as I said earlier, says that you still have to machine those areas. So let's go and add some tool path to be able to do that. Well, we're going to go and start with a 2D contour. Remember, I told you that the, the 2D tool path, you typically select actual edges that you want it to follow. So let's go and grab a tool. And we have a library full of tools here. I'm actually going to go to our sample tool library. We'll go and grab our sample tools an inch, scroll down, and maybe I'm going to start with an eighth inch flat end mill. We'll go and select it. It automatically pulls in the speeds and feeds. And now I get to choose my geometry that I want to cut. So I'll go and choose these areas down here below. I can also go and do a 2D contour up top or using these edges over here. And we'll go and hit OK and see what we get. It creates my toolpath for me. And then I'm ready to actually go and machine it. And when I'm ready to go machine it, all I have to do is, of course, simulate it. Pardon me, I put my toolpath in the wrong setup. So I'm just moving it around here for a second. And then we'll go and simulate that together. Almost done calculating. And then we'll go and simulate it. But the key is that it's really effortless to be able to create new toolpaths, simulate it, and verify that everything you ask for is what you're getting. We'll skip forward two of our toolpaths and hit the play button. And it looks like I do have a collision. Now remember, I picked this tool from our sample library. It looks like I chose an eighth inch tool that's rather short, you know, not tall enough for this particular application. I could go and change this to a larger diameter tool. That would be ideal. That's going to be larger and also longer. But I might want to figure out, you know, what's the correct diameter for the geometry I'm trying to get. 
Well, we have inspection tools that help you with that too. So the minimum radius analysis is my favorite. Let's actually set this to make sure that we're in inches units so we can see this a little bit easier. And we'll go into our minimum radius. And what we could see here in green is the size of my tool. So let's say the biggest tool I might use is a quarter inch. I could go and grab my slider here and it's telling me the size of tool that I'm gonna need to be able to get in here. So I need this tool to be at most, what it looks like, 0.23, right? That's pretty helpful. Now we could go back into our tool path. We can go and edit our tool selection and we'll go back to our sample library. Let's go and find our sample tools for inch. Oh, I chose the wrong one. There we are. And we're gonna go with, see here, 3 16 flat end mill. Perfect. And we'll go and select that. We could also, by the way, of course, modify that tool. And so I might wanna go and do that as well. I think this is gonna be a little bit too short. We'll go and edit our tool and add a little bit of flute length to this. We'll just go and make this an inch. Perfect. Cool. Now it's going to go and regenerate everything for us. And once we have, we're going to be able to go and simulate this again. Now, one of the things I'm noticing right off the bat is I'm creating these tool paths on these individual areas here. And I might actually want this to go all the way around our part to have a nice smooth finish. Well, remember, this is a design tool and a cam tool. So all I really have to do is go back into my design area. I'll go and show my part here for a second. There it is. And we can go and create a sketch and use that sketch to drive any of our tool paths. So in this case, I created a sketch. We're gonna go and add an intersection and it's gonna go and create a sketch for us of exactly what we wanted to follow. That's all I wanted. Now we could go back into our manufacturing, go to edit our 2D contour. And under geometry, I could go and deselect or if it's quicker, I could just go and reselect whatever it is that I wanna reselect, including this new sketch. We'll make sure that it's gonna cut on the outside, hit okay, and in just a second, I'm gonna have all my tool paths exactly how I want it. We'll simulate that in a second, but I do know that we also need to deal with this area here. Under 3D, we have a variety of different tool paths at your fingertips. One of the things that I find to be very helpful if you're not sure which tool path to use is to simply hover over the tool paths. We'll give you an indication of what they do so that you can make the best choice of what you want to use. We'll go and select a tool. In this particular case, I think we're going to want a ball and mill. Let's go and grab one from our sample tools again. We'll go and grab maybe our quarter inch ball and mill, I think would be fine. That'll be great and select that and hit OK. And it's going to go and start machining potentially everything in my part. So remember that in, when we're talking about the 2D tool pass, we select edges. And with 3D, it's going to try to get everything that it can. With In this particular case, what we want to make sure to do is we want to make sure to contain the boundary of where it's going. And it's as simple as selecting that boundary, potentially adding an additional offset if you would like to, and hitting OK and it's gonna go and show you the results. Let's go and simulate that. Simulate it. Oh, hold on a second. We're almost done generating, generating our tool paths. Once we're done, of course, we're gonna be able to simulate it. While I'm doing that, let me do a quick little double check on our chat window, see if we have any questions. No questions on the chat or the q and I'll admit, I'm surprised. Don't forget that you can ask questions. I'm happy to answer them. Let's go and simulate this for us. We'll skip through the very first two operations. We've already seen those so far, nothing changed. And now we're gonna go around our part. Let's go and pause that real quick. Let's start right over here. I'll slow it down just a little bit. So it's gonna go around our part. I think it was this one actually. It'll go around our part, nice and smoothly, exactly what we wanted. And then now we can focus on the top area after it goes around. Let's get to the next operation. And it's gonna go and start machining those surfaces right there. Now again, remember the key is being able to quickly and easily be able to create your tool paths. And with Fusion 360, you could do that as I've shown so far. So let's jump right back to the PowerPoint for a second. Reason number one, every machinist should program their parts in Fusion 360 is that it's fast. 
if you're programming manually, this is a dream. This is a huge difference from what you're doing already. If you're programming with other CAM software, I will, I will tell you that I think you're still gonna be faster than what you're doing today. Even if you have been using that program for a long time, I think you're gonna find that Fusion 360 is gonna help you become faster. Reason number two that you should program your parts in Fusion 360 is that Fusion 360 is integrated. And what do I mean when I say integrated? I mean integrated CAD and CAM. I talked about that a few minutes ago about how you can use the design workspace to create sketches to drive tool paths, to create where your model is relative to fixtures or jigs, or of course your vices or your machining table. But it's also about having the design tool and the CAM tool in one place for design changes, right? So I could ask you again, how many people in the room have ever had an engineer come up to them and say, you know, I know that you're about to start machining that part, but I'm really sorry, I had to make a change. Can you please wait 30 minutes? I'll give you a new part and you could just start cutting chips then, right? Sounds easy. Sounds like the delay is only 30 minutes, right? You just have to wait for that new part and instantly everything is ready to go. The hard reality though, is that if you're programming by hand, you're doing everything from scratch. If you're programming in another CAM tool, you're gonna do most everything from scratch. It might be faster than the first time because now you have the strategies already set up. You know exactly what you wanna do. You just have to execute it. You know, at best, maybe it's gonna take half the time it took you the first time. But with Fusion 360, this can all be done nearly instantly. So let's get right back to Fusion 360. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. I'm going to pause that simulation and let's jump into an example. This is another milling example. And you're gonna see that this part, uh, let's actually go to the design area for a moment. You'll see this part was created in Fusion 360. All right, so this is your best scenario. Everyone is designing and programming in the same software. Our engineer is using Fusion, our machinist is using Fusion. It's just really easy to collaborate. But let's say this design is ready for machining. So we'll go into our manufacturer workspace. I have three setups already programmed. The first of which I'll play for you right now. We're gonna start off with face milling. Then we're gonna switch over to roughing out and then finishing our interior island pocket over here. Our exterior or open pockets around the part. Then we're gonna go and spot drill all of our holes. We'll then follow that with our standard drilling, our deep drilling for the deeper holes. We'll go and bore out those larger holes. Then we're gonna go and actually, this is a really fun one. I'll spin around so you can see this. I'll pause here for a second. The purple area you see right near my mouse, that wasn't able to be milled with the larger cutter that we're, we were using based on the radius. So we're gonna go and do some rest machining there as well. Then we did our final chamfering around our part. So this is a great example of all the tool paths you would need for this production fixture that you see here. But the key is again, what happens when you have design changes? And it's not if, it's more about when you have design changes. So let's switch to the design area and make some changes. We'll go and edit our sketch because after all it is available here. We'll take this part and make this part longer. We'll make the radius larger. We'll maybe make this radius just a little bit smaller. And we'll shift this pocket over by another two millimeters. We'll go and hit finish. If I wanna make this pocket deeper, I could go and do that too. So we'll go and edit the pocket and we'll make this just a little bit deeper. And I think that's pretty good. Maybe actually we'll do one more thing. Maybe we'll actually delete an entire area on this model. Gone. Again, it was that delete key that I showed you earlier. Now, again, these are enough changes that this could potentially ruin your day as a production machinist or a prototype machinist. And we're going to go and switch to the manufacturer workspace, and we're going to get a lot of red warnings. Those red warnings are telling us that the tool paths we have already created no longer match the geometry that's on the screen. No surprise, we changed the geometry. But all we have to do, instead of reprogramming from scratch, is right click and hit the generate button or hit control G on your keyboard if you prefer keyboard shortcuts. It's gonna go and recalculate all of those tool paths based on the actual geometry changes. Now it's not perfect, right? This is gonna work for 95% of your situations and 95% of the changes that happen. 
In certain situations, you might need to come in here and edit your toolpath. If it has a missing reference, just go and reselect it. It's really that easy. We'll go and edit our reference here too, same idea. We'll go to geometry, reselect our pocket. It's gonna go and recalculate just like everything else. Now that I've done that, I could go in and simulate our part, hit that play button, and you're gonna see all of the same toolpaths you saw the first time, but of course they're now applied to our larger part with different size radii and different dimensions, right? I didn't have to go and reprogram anything. All I had to do in one case was reselect a contour. But the idea here is that I might have saved 45 minutes by being able to do it this way. And it's all possible because Fusion 360 has integrated CAD and CAM. Now remember though, that the example I'm showing you right now is that the design and the machining are all being done in Fusion 360 itself. And especially if you come from a company that you're not using Fusion 360 today for machining, you might also in that company have your design engineers using another software. Or maybe you're a prototype shop and you're getting files from all sorts of different clients. And those files are coming in as SOLIDWORKS files, inventor files, step files, IGES. You never know what you're gonna get. Sound familiar? Probably. So here's another example. This is the same part actually, but this part is a reference to a SOLIDWORKS part. And you'll see here at the very beginning of my design tree, a link to a SOLIDWORKS component. I'll show you that here in my data panel. So the file that I have open at the moment is this one right here. It's indicated by that J for Jason. That's my name, of course. And your initials would show up, of course, if you had this open on your end. But this file is looking at this 2D milling dash SOLIDWORKS part for the geometry. And the really cool thing about this technology, which is called AnyCAD, by the way, is that it allows you to reference that SOLIDWORKS part or the STEP file or the NX file or a variety of different file types, add your toolpaths, just like we had on our previous part. This is the same thing like you saw before, and I'll go and simulate this, right? Exactly what you expected. But it's gonna allow you to be able to update that part and have the geometry update just like we did with it being entirely in Fusion 360. So let's actually show you this in action. I have two Windows Explorer folders open right now. This one right over here has an up-to-date SOLIDWORKS file. I'll go and hit Control C to copy it. The one on the right is actually a link to the Fusion 360 documents. Remember, Fusion 360 is cloud connected. You can access your files from the Fusion 360 app, from our website, from your phone or your tablet if you really want to. And you can also access it using what's called the desktop connector, which creates a folder on your computer. So I'll go and paste this file right here into the desktop connector. It's gonna give me a warning that I'm replacing a file that's already there. Now let's go and do that again. I think I must not have hit copy. I'll just do it the slow way. And right click and hit paste. Perfect. And when I go into Fusion 360 and I look at my data, you're going to see here that the SOLIDWORKS part has all of these different versions. And you're going to see an up-to-date part. I could also, by the way, take an older version and promote it, and now it will become the latest version. You'll see it'll be version 6 in a second. The thumbnail changed, indicating that something's different in this part. And again, all I have to do to consume those changes is go into my design area, choose get the latest version. It's gonna go and get the latest version from the SOLIDWORKS file. I can see that on my screen right now. Switch over to the manufacturer workspace. I see all of those tool paths all in red. Again, remember, it's telling me that they're out of date. All I have to do is regenerate them. It'll recalculate them based on the changes to the geometry. And then once it's finished, I can then go and simulate this, of course, as well. So this is another example of how integrated CAD and CAM is gonna allow you to be able to streamline your process, to not have to rework parts that you've already programmed because we're trying to become more efficient and we're trying to be more profitable. This is a great way to be doing exactly that. So let's go back to our PowerPoint again, integrated. Now you understand what that means, I hope. Reason number three. Reason number three is that Fusion 360 is powerful, right out of the box, by the way. So let's go into Fusion 360 again, and I'll show you what I mean. 
So the two examples I showed you so far, actually it was technically three examples, they're all milling related. But the reality is that Fusion 360 also comes with turning. So let's go and show you, we'll go and simulate this example. This one here is showing you not just turning, of course, but turning with live tooling as well. This is included with Fusion 360 in its standard pricing, which we'll talk about in just a few moments. But as you could see here, we're not only turning the part, we're also milling the part from a variety of different directions as well. This is all included with Fusion 360. Also, you have the ability to program lasers, water jet machines, and also plasma cutters. This is a quick example from NYC CNC. If you haven't seen their YouTube channel yet, I highly encourage you to take a look. They have all sorts of videos on how to learn Fusion 360, amongst other things as well. But we're going to go and simulate this. And again, you're going to see in this particular case, plasma cutting an NYC CNC sign, including a pattern so you can make as many of these at the same time if you'd like. Now we didn't talk about nesting yet, but Fusion 360 as of recent also has nesting built in as well. Nesting is gonna be commercial grade or production grade nesting. It is available through what's called the nesting and fabrication extension. It is one of the only things that you'd have to pay additional to upgrade to, but that's gonna give you production level nesting. So you could take a variety of sheet metal components or even 3D models that you're gonna cut on a router or CNC milling machine, and it's gonna help you nest those. And it's integrated just like the CAD and CAM was that I showed you earlier. That's built into Fusion 360 as well. And keep in mind, by the way, that Fusion 360 is a platform. Right? It's meant to be able to help you take your idea from an idea into a prototype and mass production from the start all the way to the end of its cycle. And for our really powerful technologies, those are coming from other Autodesk softwares. I mentioned at the very beginning of this, this webinar is what it is, that AutoCAD is one of the Autodesk products. But you might have also heard of software like PowerMill or FeatureCam or PowerInspect or PowerShape. Those specialty products do what they do really, really well. They end up also being quite expensive, very much worth it, but they're a little bit pricier. Fusion 360 is starting to incorporate those technologies directly into Fusion 360 itself. The nesting and fabrication exam, uh, nesting and fabrication extension that I mentioned is a great example of that, taking Autodesk TrueNest technology and integrating it into Fusion 360. We also have the ability to take those technologies from PowerMill, PowerInspect, and FeatureCam as well. Again, part of that extension. And so here you're seeing toolpath trimming, we'll go and simulate this. You'll see that this particular toolpath, let's uh, turn off that. This particular toolpath is going to be trimmed. Actually, we'll just show you from over here so you can see it a little bit more clearly. And you can trim the toolpath, these top edges here, to be able to shorten the actual toolpath itself. So you're cutting less air. If you're interested in multi-axis, we've taken technologies from PowerMill and FeatureCam that are also quite incredible. Things like Steep and Shallow from PowerMill, things like Hole Recognition from FeatureCam. And we've also, also, we've also incorporated probing, uh, not just for your WCS setup, but also for your in-canvas probing. So you can do quality control inspections as you're machining and then update your toolware and remachine that part so that once you take the part off of your machine, it's much more likely to meet your specs. And again, that's all available in the extension. We'll go and show you a quick simulation on this particular part. And you're gonna see here that this is gonna include advanced probing. We're facing the part, we're gonna go and mill the part. And again, you know, this is a little bit more advanced. This is actually porting on an intake manifold, all possible here in Fusion 360. Perfect, I love this one. This is a great example. All right, so that's powerful. Let's go and close that up. All right, what's the fourth reason every machinist should program their parts in Fusion 360? Reason number four is that Fusion 360 is affordable. What good is the most powerful software out there if you can't afford it, right? Machine shops these days are working more than ever to make sure that they're profitable. And part of that means spending less on what they can spend less on, right? Being more strategic about your spending.
So Fusion 360 is only $495 per person per year. This is very different than a lot of the other softwares out there where you pay a lot upfront and then you could choose to pay maintenance or not. And if you don't pay maintenance, you're not gonna get any upgrades, right? Any updates to the software. For $495 per person per year, you get everything that's built into Fusion 360's standard software. And you're gonna get also all of the updates as well, right? And you could use this on as many computers as you would like, as long as it's you using it. So remember, this is gonna be a little different than installing a software on a machine and having five programmers potentially sharing that computer and fighting over it. Instead, for only $495 per person per year, you could have everyone in your shop being able to have access to the tool when they need it. So you could be more efficient as well. That's really key. And then for any of those advanced features that we talked about, those additional functionalities, those are available via the extensions. And the pricing for the extensions is also meant to be able to give you flexibility in how you're actually operating your business. So let's go and take a look at that here in a second. So on the top, we have the machining extension. On the bottom, we have the nesting and fabrication extension, but you'll see that they have similar pricing models. We're going to start from right and actually work our way to the left. So if you would like to access these for the entirety of your year, so your subscription, you would go and pay the extension price of $1,600 per person for the year, right? It makes it really easy. If you, however, don't need any of this capability on a regular basis, and rather you have a certain project in mind that you wanna use it, maybe that project is only gonna last a month. Well, with the extension pricing, you have the ability to turn on that extension for just the month. You'll see the monthly pricing is 200 cloud credits or $200. Our cloud credits are really a token system. Each one is a dollar and it allows you to make purchases from it within the product itself. So if you have a pool of cloud credits with your machine shop, each of your programmers could choose when to turn on an extension or not. You could turn it on on a monthly basis for 200 cloud credits or $200. And you could also turn it on for the single day. And I haven't seen any other CAM software out there that does anything like this. This flexibility allows you to spend what you need to get what you need when you need it. And that I think is really important because as I mentioned at the beginning of this, it doesn't help you to have the most powerful software out there if you can't afford it, right? If you can't access it, when you have to hire another programmer, when you're doing well in your machine shop and you wanna expand your business or you wanna get an extra machine, Right, the key here is flexibility on the Autodesk side of things. So let's talk about the next thing. This is the very last one. Reason number five, every programmer should use Fusion 360 is that Fusion 360 is easy to learn. It doesn't help you if you can't afford the software. It also doesn't help you if you can't figure out how to use it. So Fusion 360 is trying to make it super easy for you to learn and then use after. It also is making it easy for you to onboard those new employees or those employees that have been using, let's say Mastercam for the last 20 years and finally have heard about Fusion 360's positive traits for long enough that they wanna try it too. They might know Mastercam really well or Gibbscam or some other CAM software really, really well, but they need to be able to transition that knowledge from their software to Fusion 360. And we're trying to make that as easy as possible for you. So number one is that Fusion 360 is intuitive. That means that we're doing things like working from left to right to be able to make things intuitive, just like the English language, right? Left to right is what you're gonna do in the software itself. We're also gonna include things like tool tips. So as I showed you earlier, when you hover over any of these tools, we're gonna to give you a little pop-up to show you what it is so you can know what it is without having to go and read through a book, so to speak. Speaking of books, we also have an instruction manual, but instead of it being printed, it's available online at your fingertips whenever you'd like. And that means that you don't have to worry about buying one of these books and have it being obsolete or out of date as soon as it was printed, because we can update our website and update that product documentation whenever we have an update. And we have these updates often, right? The idea is that we're constantly trying to give you a better and better product. 
So this is, as you could tell, at help.autodesk.com. This is our product documentation, but I'll show you the best way to find this from Fusion 360 itself is when you're using a tool, maybe it's the scallop toolpath, and maybe there's an option here under passes that I'm not really sure what it does. There's a black circle in the corner here. The I in it is for information. Click on the I for information and it will take you to the exact right page on the instruction manual or that product documentation. So you could just go straight to our website. You can also just access it from Fusion 360 itself. Just makes it easy for you as well. Let's get back to our PowerPoint for a moment here. The next one here is gonna be our tutorials. We like to call it our self-paced learning because you get to learn at your own pace. And you can do that from your shop. You could do that from an office. You can also do that from the comfort of your home. You don't have to wear normal clothes. You also don't have to wear a face mask. You can do this in your pajamas if that's what you want to do. The key, though, is that you have all of this at your fingertips, everything from beginner stuff like getting started in Fusion 360, the fundamentals of milling or the fundamentals of turning. We have much more advanced classes as well. And for any of you out there that happen to come from Mastercam, and I imagine there might be a lot of you, we have a Mastercam transition guide that shows you exactly what you're going to need to know to take the knowledge you already have from Mastercam and apply it to Fusion 360. I think you're going to love what we have available here. Last but not least here, we have a YouTube channel. Everyone has a YouTube channel. We have one too. Our YouTube channel has over 190,000 subscribers. As of today, I think it's 191,000. And we have over 1,200 videos on a wide range of topics, of course, including CAM. Keep in mind, of course, that you can also search within our channel. So if you search on the very top of YouTube, that's going to search all of YouTube. And if you search right over here, down below in that search window, that's going to search within our channel. You can search, for example, for the word chamfer, and you're going to find a bunch of videos showing you how you can, you can machine those chamfers quickly and easily, because there are a couple of different ways you might want to do that. So take a look. Actually, the best video for that one happens to be by NYC CNC. So we've covered all five ways that I think that you should consider for switching to Fusion 360. Now let's talk about how you can learn more. So if you're in North America, whether you're in Canada or in the US, the phone number for you to call is 1-833-843-3437. You can dial it right now and we have people in our sales staff that will answer all of your questions. You can also, of course, ask more questions in the q and I'm about to get to that and I'll answer all the questions I see there. If you'd like to schedule an appointment with us, reach out to us you, either by phone or by email, fusion 360 sales namer at autodesk.com. Now, I'm also going to put this in the chat window for you. So if you would like to just be able to click on it, you'll see that here in just a second. I'm going to go and put that in the chat window. Please hold on momentarily. There we are. So you have the phone numbers and the email addresses in the chat window, but here's the key. By reaching out to us directly, you can get a free technical evaluation. So tell us a little bit about your business and what your needs are, what software you're currently using, and we'll be able to tell you if Fusion 360 is a good fit or if it's a great fit for your business. If it is, we'll also be able to provide you with a technical demonstration. So proving out the workflows that you would need to encounter in your business, we'll prove those out for you. If you'd like to give us a sample part, we could potentially actually use that sample part and show you how we would program it. And then you'll be able to know how that compares to how long it took you to program in your current software. The key though is reach out to our team. We are here to help. So in summary, we covered quite a bit today. We covered a little bit about what Autodesk is all about. And then we focused on the five reasons every machine should program their parts in Fusion 360. I know you've heard all of these before, but I'm going to repeat them. Fusion 360 is fast. You can program your parts faster than you've ever programmed them before. Fusion 360 is integrated. By having CAD and CAM in one package, it allows you to be able to program your parts better and faster. And it also allows you to be able to reprogram your parts or update the programming in your parts based on design changes, whether those design changes came from Fusion 360 or elsewhere. Doesn't matter.
Fusion 360 is also powerful right out of the box with three axis milling, four axis milling, five axis milling, turning, including turning with live tooling, laser cutting, water jet cutting, and plasma cutting, all right out of the box. And if you want even more power, the machining extension and or the nesting and fabrication extension might be good choices for you. Again, Fusion 360 is incredibly powerful. It's also incredibly affordable, $495 per person. You really just can't beat that. And Fusion 360 is easy to learn. And that's gonna help you learning Fusion 360 to transition from your current platform, but it'll also help you when you have to hire new employees as you're expanding your business as well. We also talk a little bit about how to get a free trial. Actually, I forgot to talk about that. Just go to our website, autodesk.com, go to the Fusion 360 product page and you'll see a link to download our free trial. It's only 30 days, but in those 30 days, you get to try out everything in our software to be able to see if it's gonna be the right fit for you. You combine that with contacting our team so we can actually have a conversation with you about your needs. And I think that's gonna be the best possible experience of switching from whatever software you're using, or at least considering switching from the software you're using to Fusion 360 itself. So we covered all of the above. And with that, I believe that means it is time for Q&A. Hold please, I'm gonna go and grab the questions. All right. It looks like we have a couple of things in the chat window here. Tim Paul is saying that he's supposedly an expert and he had a question about the live tooling um, in particular with turning with live tooling. So he was asking whether or not you have to have the extension to be able to access it. And the answer is no. As I was mentioning earlier, the, uh, the tooling, so, oh my gosh, turning, with live tooling is built right into Fusion 360. You don't need any extension, it's just built right in. You're gonna have the ability to set up your turning operations as well as your um, milling operations all in the same place. It makes it really easy. And when you wanna change your coordinate system for let's say approaching from this direction or approaching from that direction, all you have to do is pick a new tool path and change the Z to face the direction you want that tool to come from. It's really that easy. Perfect, thank you, Tim, for that question. Uh, it looks like we have another question coming from, it looks like Jesus, and Jesus was asking about nesting in particular. And Jesus wanted to know if the nesting is easy and also how it compares to our separate software like TrueNest. Remember that the whole idea behind Fusion 360, Jesus, is that the nesting is built in, right? Fusion 360 is the platform to take you from that idea over to manufacturing. And so while TrueNest or a variety of other nesting applications have a lot of power and a lot of capabilities in it, what I believe makes the most sense is having that power harnessed from where you're actually designing the part and where you're actually manufacturing the part. So as you change your design and that might affect your nests, you can have it update your nest and therefore eventually update your tool paths for those nests. And that to me is really important. So if you start comparing feature to feature, there might be features in whatever cam or nesting software you're currently using that might not yet be in Fusion 360 itself. But keep in mind that the overall is gonna be a net win or a net gain by you having everything in that same tool. That is my experience, but I'm happy to have a conversation with you about the details of which particular features you're questioning or wanting to know more about. I actually don't see any other questions in this learning panel here. So I guess I'm just gonna say thank you all for your time today. This has been an absolute wonderful presentation, or at least I enjoyed it on my end. I hope you did too. If you have any questions about anything you saw today that you didn't feel comfortable asking, feel free to ask via email. We're going to be sending you a follow-up. Make sure that you had a great experience today. So again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for joining, and thank you for considering Fusion 360. I believe it is the perfect tool, and every machinist should start to program their parts in it. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll be seeing you soon.